going to talk about number and quantity in algebra. So first we'll start by the kinds of numbers. So we have natural numbers, which is any number starting with 1, so 1, 2, 3. Next one is whole numbers, and that's 0 and the natural numbers, so 0, 1, 2, and 3, and so on. And the integers is both of these now adding the negative numbers, so any negative 0, 1, 2, and 3, and so forth. And then to go on with the kinds of numbers, we'll talk about the rational, which is any number that can be expressed as a fraction with an integer as the numerator and a non-zero integer as the denominator. So there's a couple examples for you. Next is irrational, and that's any non-terminating, non-repeating number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. So pi would be an example of that. Real numbers are the set of all real numbers that fall into any of these previous categories that we have mentioned so far. So your natural whole numbers, integers, rational, and irrational numbers. And the final is complex, and that's any number that contains the imaginary number i, where i squared is equal to negative 1, and the square root of negative 1. So the next thing to remember is PEMDAS. You may have learned this in like middle school or so. But it's just the order of operations, which is parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And these last four need to go in, in the order that they appear from left to right. So now we'll talk about properties for addition and multiplication. So if we start with the identities of additive and multiplicative, it's basically saying a plus zero for additive or a times one will always give you a. And we talk about the inverses of additive and multiplicative, it's saying that a times its inverse or a times the opposite of it is equal to zero or one. Commutative is whenever you can say a plus b is also equal to b plus a or a times b equals b times a. You just flip the order and it should be commutative. Associative is whenever you say a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c and you just move the parentheses. If you can move the parentheses and still get the same thing then it is associative. Same thing for multiplication. And distributive is whenever we have a times parenthesis b plus c is equal to a b a c. So basically you just distribute to each factor. Same thing here. If a plus b in parentheses plus c, then you can just add them, or times c, sorry, then you can times them and get a c and b c. So next I want to talk about the properties of natural numbers. So prime numbers are counting numbers that are greater than 1 whose only factors are 1 in itself. So an example would be like 1, 3, 5, 7. They're usually odd but not always. Are Not all odd numbers are prime. So then composite numbers and they're counting numbers greater than 1 that are not prime. So these two are opposites of each other. So any number that's not prime is going to be composite. And these are all even numbers plus some odd numbers. The next thing is greatest common factors, or GCF. And that's the greatest number that will divide evenly into each of two or more natural numbers. The next thing is also greatest common divisor, or GCD. And that's signified by GCD of M and N, where M and N are both natural numbers. And these two things are basically the same thing since factoring something and dividing something are basically the same thing. Least common multiple, or LCM, is the lowest number that is a multiple of each of the natural numbers in the set. So the last thing I want to talk about is line equations. These are basically the same thing. Some of them are very, very similar to each other, like these two and these two. But they're just different formations and everyone is taught different ways. So for instance here, standard form, which is the most common, is AX plus BY equals C, where your slope is AB, because if you were to get rid of the X and Y and go through your multiplication, division, and subtraction, all that, you end up getting negative A over B, and your Y intercept would be C over B. The next thing is slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. These two can be the same, and that's where I was saying slope, because slope is m here. So to do that is where we want to get subtract by over here, or sorry, we subtract ax over here and then divide by b. And that's how we get that into the form of this. 
So next is point slope form, and that's y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, where m is still the slope, and x1, y1 is a point on the line. The next is two point form, and that's y minus y1 over x minus x1 is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 where x1, y1, and x2, y2 are two points on the given line. And these two are also the same, just wrote in different formats. So the next thing is intercept form. That's x over x1 plus y over y1 is equal to 1, where x1, 0 intersects the x-axis, and 0, y1 intersects the y-axis. That's all for today.